And now we're going to demonstrate bandaging of the upper extremity. We have already done the manual lymphatic drainage. We have uh, taken care of applying lotion on the skin uh, before we get to the bandaging. So we are using our stockinette, which is um, just light in nature. And what we do is we cut out an opening for the thumb prior to putting it on. So we have the patient slide her hand into here and we bring it all the way up to the axilla. So we have the thumb cut out here, but we're going to take it out just for the purpose of wrapping the fingers. So we're going to start the wrapping of the fingers with a one inch elastomeal. So we start at the wrist, we anchor it at the wrist twice. Now I'm going to have you open up your hand and keep the fingers spread out. And we come to the tip of the bottom of the fingernail and go around covering everything. Make sure we get good coverage because remember, swelling tends to want to get trapped wherever there is not enough compression. So we bring it around and we come to the tip of the next finger. Go around, make sure we get enough coverage everywhere, but we're not pulling tight. We're just putting it on, laying it on, come around the wrist and back up and go to the next finger. Again, bring it down towards the tip of where the nail starts. And then we go around. Bring it around the bottom. And again, once again, to the top. Some therapists will use a two inch and they fold it in half. That will work as well. Just remember that sometimes you may need to use more than just one. So I noticed that this is gonna be more than one that I will need. So I just anchor this last piece here and go on to my next one. Once again, anchor it at the wrist and then we make sure we come to the thumb. If you notice that there are areas that are not covered, you can always go back and cover those with what's left. Oops. And anchor the rest. At the wrist. Then we bring the stockinette over and we put the thumb through the opening, okay? And then we're gonna use a foam. We're gonna use um, quarter inch foam just to provide some compression to help break up any fibrosis on top of the wrist and also on top of the hand. I've also created some channels underneath in order to push the fluid in different directions, okay? And we can stabilize that with cotton batting. Okay, and then we bring it back around, spread your fingers. And that has been stabilized. Then we use the rest of the cotton batting, going all the way up. 
so we're not putting any tension. And there are many different types of cotton battings that from different companies. Here at the elbow where there is flexion, we can double it up so that there is less. Oop, stop. So we go all the way up to the very top to make sure it's all covered. We tuck it in and now she is ready for the bandages. The bandages come in different sizes. We're gonna use the smallest at the hand, um, next with the forearm and then upper arm. And then there is a, a larger one to cover the whole thing. All right, so we start at the wrist. What I usually tell the patient is you can make a fist and kind of like push it into to my belly. We stabilize it at the wrist by giving it some tension. And now open the hand as wide as you can. And we come around the thumb. We do that two times. And then we come on up, over once, come back around twice at the hand and then go back around above the thumb. And then from there, we can go on up to the wrist and forearm. And at this point, I am going to use a spica pattern to go all the way up the arm. And you wanna give a little bit of pull the tension Pull the slack off the bandage as you pull it up and as you pull it down you can tape this so that it doesn't go anywhere and then we start with the next one now you can close your hand fold it there and we start down by the wrist with the second bandage and again we're going to do the spica pattern. So we go up at an angle, and come back halfway. And what I mean by halfway, this is the width, this is half of the width of the bandage. I know there are some bandages now, what they do is they actually give you a line so they kind of like a cheat sheet. All right, when we get to the elbow, I'm gonna have her bend slightly and we're gonna come up above it and come back at an angle. This is an area where there's movement. So we wanna provide ability to maintain that movement. So we don't wanna make it uh, so tight where it's binding. And remember, we did extra padding on that elbow as well. Again, we use another piece of tape to hold it in place. And then we do the last one. We start right below the elbow, anchor it, and we go up. Not too much tension here, because remember we already have the other. And this is a wider band. And remember, we're gonna do half of that width of the bandage. And there we go. We can leave this like this, or we can cover the entire thing. If there was more fibrosis to worry about and you were concerned with um, shifting of bandages or loosening, you can cover it up with a wider one that goes all the way from the wrist. You go all the way up, but almost just as a cover, not creating a lot of tension.
And then the rest, we are just going to tape it. And then we want to check the mobility of the patient, be able to bend the elbow. And we encourage the patient to do their exercises while they're banded and to use their arm. And at the wrist, same thing, up and down. That's it.